When you know, you know. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 love at first sight scenes on TV. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite couples who we knew were meant to be from their first meeting. Um, well, look, I'll let you get back to work, but I, I really look forward to working with you, Mr. Scott. Mm -hmm. You can pop, Michael. Number 10, Magnus and Alec, Shadowhunters. I'm Magnus. I don't think we've been formally introduced. Alec. Oh, uh, we uh, should really you know, probably get, you know. Right. We should join the party. One of the best couples to grace our screens in recent years has to be Magnus and Alec from Shadowhunters. It was clear from their very first meeting that something was going to go down between these two, despite the fact that Alec technically hadn't come out yet. They meet at a party where Alec is instantly taken with Magnus, and Magnus clearly returns the feelings, flirting with Alec and saying that he should call him. Pretty boy, get your team ready. What to do? I'm not talking to you. We love that the writers of the show wasted no time on making it clear that this couple was meant to be. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Alec. I don't know what you're talking about. You will. Number nine, Oliver and Felicity, Arrow. Felicity Smoke? Hi, I'm Oliver Queen. Of course. I know who you are, you're Mr. Queen. Throughout Arrow's run, Oliver and Felicity may have had their ups and downs, as well as breakups and makeups. But how could anyone watch their first scene together and not realize that there had to be a happily ever after for these two? Mr. Queen was my father. Right, but he's dead. I mean, he drowned, but you didn't, which means you could come down to the IT department and listen to me babble. Felicity Smoke is working the tech department of Queen Consolidated, and Oliver requests that she dig up some data that he says he spilled coffee on, even though it's clear that it's riddled with bullet holes. My coffee shop is in a bad neighborhood. Felicity is flustered and can't stop rambling at him, but it's clear that Oliver finds her awkwardness charming. Don't we all? Number eight, Matt and Karen, Daredevil. Miss Page, my name is Matt Murdock. This is my associate, Foggy Nelson. Do you mind if we sit down? She gave a vague shrug. I say we go with it. Let's just say this wasn't your typical rom-com meet-cute. Lawyer Matt Murdock, also known as the red-clad street-level superhero Daredevil, meets Karen Page after she's arrested as a murder suspect. Despite how guilty she may have appeared, Murdock instantly believed her innocence, and even in the trying circumstances, the two hit it off right away. I didn't kill him. Before long, they were flirting with one another, even as Matt tried to help Karen clear her name. Because it's not safe for her to go back to her own apartment, Murdoch says that she should go home with him, and their love story kicks off from there. Ethics be damned. Can I ask a personal question? I haven't always been blind. I guess that's what everyone wants to know. That or how do you comb your hair? How do you comb your hair? Number seven, Marissa and Ryan, The O.C. In the very first episode of The O.C., Ryan finds himself uprooted from his regular life when he's taken in by his public defender, Sandy Cohen, who just so happens to live in a lush Orange County mansion. Told you, you could do worse. As he's having a cigarette at the end of the driveway, he meets neighbor Marissa Cooper, who he is clearly into from the start, delivering this super cringy opening line. Who are you? Whoever you want me to be. The two share a smoke together, and Ryan tries to impress her with the tale of his arrest. But even though Marissa is skeptical, it's clear that she's intrigued. Number six, Eric and Donna, That 70s Show. Remember how we first met? <laughs> oh, is this a sexy story? <laughs> It's really more sad than sexy. Yeah. We know that Donna and Eric have been neighbors for a long time, but it's only in this season four episode that we got to see a flashback to their very first meeting. This was a case of one-sided love at first sight, as Eric is immediately infatuated with his new red-headed neighbor. He gives Donna goo-goo eyes and we see hearts spring forth all around him, but Donna isn't impressed and socks him one. Eric, say hello to Donna. Bean. <laughs> wow, you're strong. 
Considering the rest of their relationship, this entire interaction is pretty much perfectly on brand. Number five, Dharma and Greg. The entire premise of this sitcom is actually based on a couple falling in love at first sight. Dharma and Greg may be polar opposites, with her being an eccentric and free-spirited woman with a mile-wide hippie streak, and him being a Vulcan-like no-nonsense lawyer. But when they lock eyes as she's exiting a subway car, it's clear that they have a connection. Despite the fact that he doesn't act quickly enough to actually speak to her, by the end of the first episode, they've not only found one another, they've wound up married on the very same day. Well, hello, what took you so long? <laughs> Number four, Elena and Damon, The Vampire Diaries. Catherine. Um, no, I... I'm Elena. In the third season of The Vampire Diaries, fans got to see a flashback to the first time that Damon and Elena met, despite it being an encounter that even Elena herself didn't have a memory of. I don't know what I want. Well, that's not true. You want what everybody wants. What? A mysterious stranger who has all the answers? Damon sees Elena walking in Mystic Falls and believes her to be Catherine, his old love. Their discussion ends up being about the passion of love quite quickly, and it's obvious that there's an underlying tension between the two. You want a love that consumes you. You want passion, an adventure, and even a little danger. Perhaps Elena changes her mind about whether to choose Stefan or Damon, because in the end, she finds out that she really did meet Damon first. Number three, Charlotte and Trey, Sex in the City. On Sex and the City, Charlotte is the eternal optimist and hopeless romantic who spends the first three seasons waiting for a knight in shining armor to sweep her off her feet. You're such a spark plug, I love that about you. She finally gets what she's waiting for when she's running away from a potential suitor at a bar and falls in the middle of the street. Hey, right. are you all right? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Here, let me help you. Trey happens to be in a taxi and rushes out to come to her aid. And it's instantly clear that this is going to be a meet cute for the books. And that's how, in the most dramatic fashion, Charlotte met her new leading man. Their relationship may not work out in the end, but we'll never forget this meeting. Number two, Kurt and Blaine, Glee. Excuse me, um, hi, can I ask you a question? I'm, I'm new here. My name is Blaine. Kurt. One of Glee's fan favorite couples is Kurt and Blaine, who met in the second season. From the moment Kurt arrives at the private all-boys school Dalton Academy, Blaine offers him his hand and they run through the halls of the school together in a slow motion moment. Kurt is in awe of Blaine from the very start, and as Blaine and the Warblers serenade him with a rendition of Katy Perry's Teenage Dream, it's clear that he's in for some romance. Why can't every relationship start like this? Before we unveil our most romantic number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Excuse me, is this room 106? Hey, who's that? I, I don't Why know. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? You're Daphne? Why, yes I am. Uh, when Fraser told me he'd hired an English woman, I pictured someone a little more, uh, not quite so. You're Daphne? I felt drawn to room 110. As if she knew that someone very special was behind that door. And as fate would have it, that someone was Marshall. It, it was, was love, love at first sight. sight. This is for you. Patrick. David. David Rose, you bought the general store. Least, least the general store, yeah. It's a big deal. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty big. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ted and Robin, How I Met Your Mother. It was like something from an old movie. 
where the sailor sees the girl across the crowded dance floor, turns to his buddy and says, see that girl? I'm gonna marry her someday. Obviously, the entire premise of How I Met Your Mother was about how Ted met his future wife. And of course, the moment he finally encountered Tracy was a huge one for the series. Funny how sometimes you just find things. Hi. Hi. <laughs> but the action of the show is actually kicked off in the very first episode, when Ted meets Robin for the first time and throws the audience off course by simultaneously falling in love with her at first sight, and then soon making it clear that she's not the mother. Despite that, their relationship was of course a hugely important one for the series. So Hi, have you met Ted? <laughs> Hi. Let me guess, Ted. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.